All right, Kyle. So you know how much of a fan I am of Jim Harbaugh. That's why I'm excited to see him once again in this year's college football playoffs. This year is the two seed and going in is the favorite in their first round matchup against the TCU Horn Frogs. This year's Cinderella story, still from a power five conference, but we do know that the Big 12 is obviously diminished. TCU has been a great story in terms of uh, Max Duggan and Sonny Dykes in their first year together, putting it all together and uh, nearly going undefeated, falling just short of that in the Big 12 championship game. I'm glad the college football playoff committee didn't punish them that for that, given that I think if they had a chance to do that over again, it would have been as simple as doing a quarterback sneak. Uh, TCU still number three seeds. Max Duggan still had an opportunity to go to the Heisman. If they would have won that game, who knows what could have happened between him and Caleb Williams, but <laughs> Max Duggan falling short too in the Heisman race. But will they fall short against the Michigan Wolverines? What do you think of this game? Well, it's super cool that TCU's here uh, exhibiting the the standard fourth seed, uh, the team that we think of as always being the number four, whether it's in Oklahoma or a Cincinnati or a Notre Dame. That's kind of the role inhabited by TCU this year, which is a bunch of scrappy guys that have grinded it out and got an undefeated regular season, which uh, by virtue of a bunch of other teams losing like Tennessee and Clemson and Alabama allows them to make the college football playoff as the number three seed. I forgot USC in there too. USC, I think if uh, if USC had not shit the bed against Utah, TCU might have fallen to the four seed. But even still, uh, I think that TCU is kind of exhibiting that role this year, which is, like you said, it's, it's a fun story. It's a team that we can all get behind because they went undefeated in what has been one of the most chaotic Big 12s of any season yeah. in recent memory. I just think it's going to be interesting to watch them get into this matchup because Michigan has the superior talent advantage. Michigan has uh, the superior coaching advantage. It will be very interesting to see how TCU puts this game together, uh, given that, like you said, they they have been a fun story of Max Duggan throw, chucking the ball all over the field and uh, their psychedelic frog has been delivering them magic. <laughs> TCU's offense, they like to get it done with explosive plays. They lead the nation in 50-plus yard plays, whereas Michigan, we know they're more of a grinded-out team. They took a huge hit offensively with Blake Corum and his injury. Uh, Edwards has done just fine as their lead back, and they have enough talent offensively to still generate a rushing attack. I don't think they're going to lose a step that way. And against this TCU defense, I don't think they're going to have much of an issue. If you look at TCU across the board, their defense is somewhere in the 50s, 60th ranked in the nation. Uh, their best game, their best performance came against, unfortunately, my Texas Longhorns, what they were able to do in Austin. But if you look throughout the year, they hadn't really had many performances like that defensively. And that may have just been worse offense from Texas more than great defense from TCU. You look at the last couple of performances from Michigan, they have found a good stride offensively. Uh, how they kind of bounce back from a slow start in the Big Ten championship game against Purdue, and then starting off a little slow, but obviously figuring things out in that Ohio State game. When you have talked about explosive plays, they had, what, three plays of 70-plus yards or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. J.J. McCarthy's going to be the big X factor for a lot of people. TCU has the advantage at quarterback. That's why I think that seven and a half for this game is not crazy. I don't think that this is David versus Goliath in terms of matchup. Between what I think of, like you mentioned, coaching advantage, Jim Harbaugh, and what I how bad I know TCU's defense is, I think Michigan is uh, going to be my pick ultimately in deciding this. I, I Is there any other X factors I'm missing here that come to mind for you? Yes, because the talent discrepancy between these two teams is not as dramatic as, say, Ohio State playing against Michigan State or Michigan playing against insert Big Ten team that they beat on the way to going 12-0 and this season. Illinois, who they almost lost to, um, Wisconsin, uh, I believe Penn State, they were losing and then kind of won by like 27 points at the end. It was, uh, it was kind of a weird game, but mm -hmm. the talent discrepancy is not so far apart that the the great equalizer for TCU, despite the fact that, as you said, they have the 57th ranked defense in terms of scoring in college football this year, the great equalizer, turnovers. If TCU gets, at, say, plus two on the turnover margin, or if it doesn't go that way, 
getting a bunch of sacks on J.J. McCarthy. Like, I'm talking about, like, four or five types of sacks against J.J. McCarthy. If you can get turnovers mm-hmm. and sacks and win that advantage, that's a great equalizer when you have a defense that is significantly below where this Michigan defense is, both in terms of production and in talent. So turnovers are are a big difference in the game. And if TCU is going to win that, which I think is actually a reasonable possibility, that's going to be part of the explanation as to why. JJ McCarthy has to walk into this game with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, because if you look at the field of the college football playoffs, he's the only quarterback that wasn't on that Heisman stage, uh, dug in, <laughs> Stroud, Stetson or, Bennett, <laughs> Stetson Bennett, all on that Heisman stage, and JJ McCarthy on the outside looking in with his running back Blake Corum. If he stayed healthy, probably having a much better case of being on that stage than him. JJ's been getting better as the season's progressed, but if I was him, I would go into this game and look at this as an opportunity to elevate himself. If what people think about him, see a snap better than Cade McNamara. Uh, And last year's team that we saw what happened to that offense that crumbled in the college football playoffs when they went against Georgia, this is the opportunity to prove it. Obviously, is a better athlete than Cade was last year, and that's something that Michigan should be able to use to their advantage. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm going Michigan. One thing I noticed in the Big 12 championship game is that the TCU offensive line wasn't able to really protect uh, Duggan. I think Michigan is still going to be is going to be able to take advantage of that in a similar way to Kansas State and. Uh, contrary to that, the running game for Michigan, I still think is going to translate because what Deuce Vaughn was able to do for Kansas State, I think Edwards will be able to replicate that level of production in this matchup as well. Because Michigan has Edwards and because Michigan has a pretty healthy offensive line, I don't think the loss of Corum is actually as devastating as people are making it out to be. I think that he's the name that people recognize on that team other than McCarthy. And so I think people are making it out to be a bigger deal than it is. I don't actually think that it's going to be that significant of a problem for Michigan. It certainly doesn't help. You'd like to have Blake Corum. I'm not saying that it's like going to be no different, but it it's not going to be a significant deterrent for Michigan. I am going to go with you on the Michigan pick, but damn it if I am not so tempted to pick TCU because I'm seeing it and I'm like, I can see the path to victory for TCU. I can see the game script working in their favor. And then I remind myself that a few years ago, I also picked the Packers to beat the 49ers in that NFC championship game that they got absolutely smoked in because I thought Alan Lazard was going to get 12 catches for 150 yards. So I'm going to take Michigan. All the probabilities are saying Michigan, but man, I'm so tempted to pick TCU. It's such a tempting upset pick. Uh, but I, I'm with you on the Wolverines getting the win. Jim wins the national championship this year. We're wearing khakis for a week. Anyway, guys, drop below in the comment section your opinions, your thoughts, your predictions on TCU versus Michigan. Maybe you already have your college football champion lined up in your predictions. We'd like to hear your thoughts. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all our social medias from Juju and Kyle. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. We'll see you next time.